Greetings EastEnders fans and welcome to another episode of Albert Square After Dark, your weekly EastEnders podcast. We are back and we have missed you. Uh, and this week we'll be discussing the episodes of EastEnders broadcast in the UK and everywhere else uh, from the 29th of May to the 1st of June. How are you? It's been a while. Um, missed you terribly. And my God, have we returned on a decent week. And I think you will find that quite a lot has happened in the EastEnders news in our absence. We shall be discussing everything that has been, has been kicking off in our absence over the coming weeks. Rumours, news stories, leaks, all of that is still to come at the end of the show, yes. Um, but we've got a lot to discuss about what's been happening in Albert Square this week first. And joining me, as per usual, is this lovely lady. Tell them who you are, Rihanna. Well, he's just told you I'm Rihanna, yes, Rihanna. or Ray, yes, as Ray, I always Rihanna. call myself here. Yes, Hello. Ray. Ray, there you go. How are Ray, you this week, my I, uh, lovely? Are you all right? I'm good, thank you. Well, I missed you last week. Oh, I missed you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, do, yeah. Do, what, did you, what did you do in, in, in the absence? Did you just, like, just drink drink wine all night and just sort of collapse? I can't actually remember, so No, so, so yeah, that's probably exactly what you did. Yeah, probably exactly what, what happened, did. yeah. Um, so, Re, first of all, we have got a lot yes. to discuss this week, but most importantly of all, we're in a new month. So you know what that means, <gasps> don't you? Yay! Change the calendar. Change, Change the calendar. Change the calendar. Change the calendar, calendar for the lords. For the lords. For the and lads. lasses or whatever you identify as. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right okay so may is yes. gone we are we're officially like halfway through the year now 2023 is oh trickling away trickling away as we as we speak so we go from may to june ladies and gentlemen oh it's shazza and the vic shazza and the vic is it is it the, oh yeah i can see yeah. the vic now yeah yeah, yeah. Shazza and the vic. oh she look she doesn't look happy either does she She doesn't look happy I, I mean god knows who she's confronting in there i mean that that looks to me about like early early tens. So yeah, I'm thinking it looks quite old that picture. Quite, quite an old picture that one. Um, yeah. right, so just to let you know, I would be putting this on the wall, <laughs> but we got a comment on uh, YouTube. I can't remember who who uh, who commented, so I do apologise for that. But they uh, they asked me to move the calendar a little bit across so that, so that it could be seen in the background. I thought that's a good bit of feedback. It's a perfectly fair thing to do. So I pulled the calendar off the wall, and now I can't get it back on again. <laughs> so I will get it back up for next week. I promise you. But I need to buy a new. You've been saying this for about. Three weeks there, Rob. Shut up, Ray. Stop grassing me up. <laughs> uh, right, so... <laughs> uh, so, we have much to discuss this week, so shall we get on we with it? Let's do it. So, we'll start this week with the new arrivals. The knights are rolling in. See what I did there? See what I did there? Oh, fantastic. Uh, the knights that are arriving. That took me a minute. That uh, took, took me a minute. Took you a sec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clang. I could hear, I could hear the penny <laughs> dropping all the way from Sheffield. Yeah, I heard, <laughs> I heard that on the horizon. Um, so, yeah, our new Vic era has officially now begun. Um, mm. What do you think? First impressions of the knights, Ray. What do you think? I think that George Knight. It's mm -hmm. maybe too fabulous and maybe too good. I thought this. I already. Oh, okay. Interesting. I already, for some reason, don't trust George Knight further than I can throw I don't a either. Piano. No. Something even about him. Though, isn't it? Even though he is being so charming, but it's almost mm. like you're too good to be too true. Too charming, too good. Also, also, yes. what was with that comment to Whitney? Yeah. I mean, you could argue that, no, yeah, it was just the weird. charm. But mm. who knows? Who he knows? He just like suddenly stopped in a conversation and went, "By the way, you have a really good smile, incredible smile." When he was right, like, that's creepy. Thanks. That's creepy. Yeah, well, yeah, that's I mean, creepy, in I, my opinion, I don't know. I think it's it's interesting. I mean, all three of them have come in like, and they came in like a whirlwind at the end of the week. Yeah, yeah. Um, arguably, I don't know whether they could have just held off till Monday to introduce. The new family. I don't know. I don't know whether that would have been better. I think maybe because we've had such a sad week, they just yeah. want to inject a little bit of fun. Possibly, yeah, a bit of juxtaposition. Maybe going showing on there. look, life goes on as well. It, it does go it on, does, exactly. You know, and pe not everyone on the square will be aware of who Lola was and what's happened. So no, it's it was it was interesting. So yeah, we'll discuss mm. them sort of one by one at the moment because they kind of okay. came in and they did. You know, they the thing is with all new characters, they come in like. 10 times what they usually are as people don't they yeah. like you get their most extreme version so what like Finley and Felix in, when they first came in yeah, yeah exactly yeah. mind you I don't think we've seen 10 times of Felix of Finley at any point during, yeah. his, during his time no, so true. far but, but yeah. you never know you never know um but yeah so the girls came in now 
I have to say, I liked them. I do like them, and I'm intrigued to see where they go. I think that Anna, um, because they're clear, so clearly the two of them, right? They've got quite different personalities. Uh, Gina, you get the impression that she's quite feisty, quite fiery, quite gobby, and she's gonna, yeah. she'll probably be quite happily be having cat fights soon before too long. Anna, they are going down, it seems, a bit of a sort of ditzy route with her. Now, yeah, definitely. I think, personally, I think that trying to write thick characters, in inverted commas, mm. you know, characters that are ditzy or stupid or yeah. just sort of, I think they are the hardest characters to get right in terms of in terms mm. of writing. I bring your attention to someone like Kirk from Corrie. You know, someone who yeah. is, it comes yeah. out with, you know, the person that comes out mm. with such ridiculous lines that you don't, that you think nobody is that stupid because otherwise they wouldn't yeah. be, a, they wouldn't be breathing, you know. Like, like oh, it's Queen Victoria, your, gra- your grandma. Exactly, yeah. you know, it's but was she like, joking when she said that? Like, I don't think she was. I don't think oh, she I was. Oh, I thought that she genuinely didn't know who, who the bus the bust was yeah and then when linda explained oh it's queen victoria then i thought she were joking when she said oh, uh, like, okay. oh maybe. Grand. but maybe. maybe i'm wrong it obviously wasn't know. clear enough then was it? i don't know i don't know i don't know because it was a bit it was a bit the same with freddie as well when he was kind of saying uh, like oh, well i would just think so i was just thinking i think they've obviously think... done that because them two are going to get together oh maybe 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 that's they why might work they... quite well yeah yeah that's good but i didn't think of that that's might be worth mm. I, ju- I just think that you know that sort of character is so difficult to get right in serious context like when you're doing like yeah. a sitcom or something it's really easy like i mm-hmm. think of you know alice tinker in the vicar of dibley or you know, or yeah, Rose yeah. Nyland or Rose Nyland yeah. and the Golden Girls or something. Like that's really like yeah. comedy wise, it's quite easy to do. But trying to make somebody that dumb in a sort of serious context is very difficult to kind of feel real. And I don't I don't know think she's do. that dumb, like you're saying there. Well, it depends if whether you take that line that so you said. Far. It, yeah. Mm, I, mean, yeah, I don't know. True, it, true. If she was if she was like joking, then maybe that just went mm. over my head that I thought she was just that idiotic. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see how, how Anna develops. Yeah. So but other than that, I really like them. And I like the... Now, the thing is, you cannot ignore the fact that they came in in very similar ways to the way Ronnie and Roxy came in. Ronnie and okay. Roxy, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, right, down to, right down to, A, they came in and automatically caught the attention of the two local lads. Because yeah. when Ronnie and Roxy both arrived, I think it was Dean and Mickey, I want to say, that they that they caught the attention ah, of. Ah, I don't remember and that And again, exact no, moment, but yeah. again, the same with Bobby and Freddie here, which I did yeah, love, yeah. by the way. I really liked the uh, sort of like, yeah, Bobby yeah, awkwardly good, waving. That, yeah. I liked that a lot. That, that's going to work nicely, I think. Yeah, um, But also, when Ronnie and Roxy first came in, I think it was Stella had just died. So everybody was all kind of like really sort of more ah. in the pub. They came in and was just like, yeah, party, whoop, 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 whoop. In the same way as here, where the girls are sort of turning on yeah. the music and trying to create the party atmosphere. So from Marbella, definitely... you know. Yeah, it's party. Marbella, yeah, Ibiza, yeah. exactly. So, you know, yeah, the, yeah. the similarities are kind of unignorable, if that's a word. Yeah, definitely. It, it is now. Yeah. So, which kind of suggests <laughs> that Ronnie and Roxy are definitely not ever coming back whilst uh, whilst these girls are here. Because... They took on, bo- kind of took on board the feedback, Rob, and yes. gave you the night and just created instead. them and created two people. <laughs> yeah. He will be, he maybe he will be bringing uh, some people back from the dead. We'll discuss that at the end of the show, but uh, it's um, we'll see. Um, but on the whole, I really, really, I really, really like them, and I'm excited to sort of see this new era come in for the Vic. Um, I think it's breathed some new life into Linda as well. Like I, yeah, this... I think I think there's only positives to come yeah. from it. But I'm just George is too good to be George, true. George, I I agree. I don't trust George yet. Something no, I about don't. him. The fact mm. that you can just so easily go toe to toe with someone like Nish, and like really sinisterly as well. Well, I, then I wondered, are you the same as Nish or something? But you hide it better. Well, maybe, maybe it's but... not that, but something. You know. Yeah, I don't know because he the way he kind of went up against Nish. Now, obviously. Especially after this week, so this has been an mm. ass all week, right? Oh, like, God. Nish, has oh been, yeah. Nish has been hateful all week, so we mm-hmm. do not mind someone like George coming in no, and no. kicking him and kicking him to the curb at not. all. So it's easy to sort of hide a bad person behind a good act like that when you're taking down another bad character. So I don't know yet whether we're supposed to be trusting George, but there's something about him. I think, but obviously, I think we it's... are supposed to be trusting him. I don't know because there's also another mysterious phone call happening. We've got yes, another I didn't mysterious phone that. call. We're carrying on the mysterious We're carrying phone on call. this mis- yeah. mister- like nobody yeah. that we have got a clue. We're not supposed to have a clue who anybody in Walford is talking to on the phone. And no. George is now continuing that tradition. So I mean, no idea who he could be speaking to at this point at no. all. Um, 
we sort of heard tell of the mum somewhere along the way. So yeah. I don't know if there's going to be some sort of mystery going on there. Because mm. uh, I think Anna had brought like a jewellery box yeah, or something. Yeah, she brought something, yeah. yeah. And uh, the sister said, oh, make sure dad doesn't see that. And she's like, I'm not stupid. So something's going on there. I mean, So yeah, so why would he, why would... So then he had a weird with Ben and my, my daughter's grew up without their mum. Yeah. It's really yeah. hard, but then yeah. won't let them have any memories of her. Fine. I mean, he is a bloke as well, so we've got to sort of put him on the suspect list for Christmas Day on the floor. That's a possibility, you know, mm-hmm. wh- however Definitely. things may go. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you what, though, Elaine continues to be bang out of order because she was just... I was just about to say... Moving yeah. these three into Linda's home uh, without giving also, her any warning whatsoever. And also, what's really annoyed me about this, actually, is the fact that Linda's got Ollie living there, who's autistic, yeah. Yeah. and... Cannot deal with this kind of disruption. You can't yeah. just shove three new people and Elaine knows that. before in there. Exactly. And Elaine knows that. Yeah, mm. it's not showing Elaine in the best of lights at the moment. So it's not it's... at the moment at all. No, nope. you know. So it's, and did Elaine it's... not know about what happened with Lola, by the way? Because she just started joining in parties. Yeah, she did. Like she I mean, knows. She, surely, she didn't know like, that. What's she going wouldn't have known that. And... She wouldn't have known that she was that she just died, obviously. But she knew that like this girl was on her, yeah. like, her uh, uh, you know, well, kind of on her last leg. So read the room, Elaine. You knew I what know. was going on. And um, she's this is a woman here, who's been you know? this is a woman that's been in like charge of pubs for years. So she should be quite oh, good at I sort know, of reading pubs, the room. Oh, I know pubs. Yeah, oh, yeah. Read yeah, the Elaine's room, bang out, mm. Elaine, Elaine's bang out of order at the moment. I don't mind telling you. Um, but. Next week, obviously, we will really get to know them and really sort of scratch away at their different personalities. Mm-hmm. Um, I do, like I said, I do love this whole thing with Freddie and Bobby. I like that. Keep yeah. that going. That's nice. I think the sisters are going to be... I think they're going to be good, actually. I think mm. they're putting a new spring spring of life. What are words? What <laughs> are words? Of, what are words? You don't need words. Just say any words you like. Nice little going <laughs> like on there. Not like I'm recording a podcast or anything, you know. Nah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be good. I, you know, yeah. you sort of have a look at the reaction online. It's predictable. You know, a whole range of new characters come in. So rarely do they become instant hits with viewers. You know, so yeah, give it time. but that's kind of what happens. That's yeah, kind of you, what happens. A new yeah. new characters have to have to work to get to work their way into your yeah. hearts. All right, every Definitely. every character that you love has had to earn their place into your mm-hmm. hearts. All right, so give them time, folks. Give them time. Remember. And trust the era that we're in, all right? Because this week, more than anything, has shown that we are in an era that can be trusted to do the right thing, all right? I'm really looking forward to sort and see how this develops. But Elaine needs to sort herself out because she's bang out of order at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, But let us know in the comment section below what you made of the new arrivals. What do you make of the knights? Uh, Where do you think the stories are going to go? Who is is George on the phone to? We need to know. Um, Interestingly as well is George is a professional boxer. So all oh, the lads, yeah, all the lads in the square knew him instantly. Oh, George, 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 George Nightmare Night. Night. George yeah, Nightmare yeah. Night. He's on the wall of the, the boxing club, for God's sake. He's famous, yeah, this boy. Yeah. Um, mm. So clearly there's no issues with sort of, no no wonder he was so unafraid of Nish. So he's maybe about six that's foot taller what it is, yeah. Oh, he's about God, six yeah, foot taller yeah. than Nish, isn't he? So yeah. it's, it, yeah, it's it, no wonder, really. Um, but it's interesting because this looks like it might give Phil a mate. Phil has not had a mate in years and years and years since like the last. That's of a good point. Phil's not had a mate since. Yeah, that's really. For God's yeah, sake. that's so I, true. That is such a great direction to give Phil because Phil has yeah. become such a sort of loner character in terms of his behaviour mm. towards everybody. He's never yeah. he had a mate in years, so I hope that that's yeah. where it's going to sort of humanise Phil that little bit more because mm. everybody needs a mate and Phil hasn't had a mate in ages. Do you th- I just think as well, like. Everyone just trusts him because they all know him as well. So maybe mm. we are going to see that he's not all that trustworthy. So maybe. yeah, maybe he and Phil might get on. Who knows? Who knows? Let's have a let's let's see what happens. But I'm very very excited. The era of the knights has arrived. Like I said, let us know what you know. Uh, well, let us know what you think even in the comment section below. <laughs> Okay, so before we get to uh, the big Lola stuff of the week, and uh, it's going to be oh, tissues at the ready. What a time! What a time it's been this week with Lola. Uh, we just need to briefly discuss Kim because we had some. Uh, we had a bit of madness with Kim this week. Now, Kim was <laughs> accosted 
by an insane woman who came into the salon. And she was nuts, this woman. Oh, uh, yeah, Adele. Oh, she, I remember Adele, name. yeah. Mm. Rolling in the deep she was. She was absolutely off her head. Uh, came in and was like just really big and loud and sort of... I mean, yeah. Kim is still obviously suffering from anxiety. She was, she's mm-hmm. very jumpy about loud noises. I think like she yelled at Jack across the street at one point because yeah, he closed the did, boot yeah. of his car too loudly. So Yeah, I wondered what that were about, right? Because she was so angry. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. And... I mean, all of it is making me think that the th- all of all those theories that we had uh, last last episode about Kim have potentially having Munchausen's or Munchausen by proxy. By I've proxy. now decided. I've now decided that none of that's happening because <laughs> it doesn't really. I don't yeah. think. It really, I no, don't think. It doesn't look, fit, well, who knows? You never know. But no, well, I, I don't what know. You're if, I don't know if it fits in. Um, but all that basically happened with Kim this week was obviously this this fan came in and um, was kind of really kind of loud and in her face and expecting her to perform as she does on camera. And obviously Kim is not in the mindset where she is. Although saying that, you know, if Kim was her normal self, for want of a better word, she probably would have been a bit more yeah, exactly. influencer with her, wouldn't Kim, she? Play, yeah, you know? exactly. But I think this because this woman obviously wanted her to do her nails and then she wanted her to record a message for her daughter because it was her birthday. Yeah. So wanted yeah. Kim to be in character, essentially. Yeah. Sort yeah, of yeah. be in in a big thing, but Kim um, Kim couldn't even remember her daughter's name or anything. No, she so, went so her, recording. Her, her anxious brain just isn't with any of it at the moment. Mm. And in the end, like she manages to sort of do a sort of weak version of herself for this woman and kind of vaguely satisfies her, and then has to, to sort of instantly leave the salon. Uh, and starts having another panic and attack. Another and another panic attack, yeah. And Sonia finds her this time. Um, now, Son- now, we said that it isn't the Munchausen thing, but Sonia seems to be worrying that it's something else as well. So I don't know yeah, whether it uh, is well, just anxiety. Well, Rob, well, Rob. Well, She yes. said that she'd felt sick all day and her back was hurting. Uh, so what, you reckon she's pregnant? Well... Is pregnancy I mean, is, ang- is mad anxiety a pregnancy syndrome? I mean, you've been pregnant. I haven't. So well, that... possibly in her current situation, if she's already anxious. Maybe that's a... I don't know. That just seemed like a very obvious thing that it could be from those two symptoms. I mean, maybe it is something else, but yeah. I mean, we're but then, to wait... but then surely Sonia would have just been like, "Are you sure you're not preggers, Kim?" Like... Yeah, I think I think Sonia would have been able to jump on that yeah. quite quickly. Is it? But what what did she send her to hospital for then? Because she sent just her to, to get because, checked. Yeah, to get checked because she's constantly yeah. having these panic attacks. You know, yeah, and just to make sure. And it's, it's giving her chest pain, attack. so she's got to be sure mm. that everything is is kind of as Kim thinks it is. Mm. And the fact that Kim is having these kind of regular panic attacks is something that needs to be addressed anyway. Mm. So... And to be fair, any kind of anxiety and stress can have a very physiological effect on you anyway, can. can't it? So, it can. Yeah. You know, I've suffered, I used to suffer from really, really bad hypochondria. And the thing, mm-hmm. the evil thing about anxiety is that it, the physical symptoms are really similar to heart attacks and yeah, yeah. all sorts of other things that can go yeah. like just to make it even better for you. Yeah? Do you know I mean, it's just so evil yeah. the way that anxiety works mm-hmm. in that respect. So I completely get why Sonia would be kind of like, right, we just need to like kind of check you over. So mm-hmm. obviously, this is not done with Kim by a long shot. Um, but no. I am now starting to think that this is just a sort of generalized anxiety storyline rather than a specific sort of strand that something else is maybe going some out. PTSD or something, you know, yeah, well, something like that, maybe, say it's yeah, that or something. Yeah, mm. I think it's going to be quite a look at sort of mental health and how to get mental health treated. And I just, and I still think it's a really interesting character to sort of give a storyline like this too, because mm. Kim obviously is quite vivacious, quite flamboyant, and showed bits of that this week, you know, when she went in to see Lola. So and she was do you sort think maybe, kid. maybe they're trying to show the diagnosis route of, you know, how long it takes for anything with mental health, maybe. even diagnosis, just getting any kind of treatment or yeah. whatever. Because Maybe. she keeps saying, oh, my name's on a list, my name's on a list. So they're going to just try yeah, and show and... the effects of people waiting to be seen and what happens meanwhile whilst yeah, they're well, left untreated is... or something. This is the thing, you know, a lot of people are on these lists, you know, and mm-hmm. the mental health sector is really struggling at the moment. So mm-hmm. maybe there's going to be a good opportunity to highlight that. So there's a few different directions they could take this in. Well, uh, I know from my... I, well, you know, I've got a family member who's bad with it and it, yeah. they don't do anything until... Who pits the fan? I'm not going to swear, and then it's too late, and you you can't you can't um, deter it any longer. You know, no. put it off, prevent it. God, I can't that's think the words word you're anymore. For. Um, <laughs> you can't so prevent what, it. We'll have to wait and see where this goes. But yeah. let us know in the comment section. Where, where do you think this is going? Do you think it's just generalized anxiety, or do you think there's something else going on with Kim? Let us know in the comment section below, or by any of the social media outlets that we'll give you at the end of the show. Now it's on to Lola. 
So to the big story of the week, and the time has finally arrived. Lola Pierce Brown has died. Uh, this week, this group of characters, this story, my heart hurts. It was a rough ride, but it was good, yeah. wasn't it? It was. It was really good. I mean. What we're yeah. going to do, I th- what we're going to do here, I think, is basically just sort of talk about, not really like kind of go through it detail by detail. We'll just sort of talk mm-hmm. about how we kind of felt, how different elements of the story made us feel. Yeah. I mean, because I think actually everybody involved in this story had their time in the spotlight, which I quite like. Yeah, it wasn't definitely. so much about like one person's dealing with it. Like mm-hmm. Billy very much had his time. Jay yeah. had his time. Lola kind of had her time last week when she was like, yeah. and it, like Lola was. When she was still pop- coherent with it yeah. all. Yeah. I mean, what I did like was, for a start, was what sometimes happens in this kind of scenario is that uh, a character who is kind of just, who's a terminal illness and they get into this stage of they're just about to die, Mm. they'll suddenly become sort of more lucid just so they can kind of have that final moment with a character. And they didn't have that this time, which it kind of added to the realism of it, I thought. Definitely. Um, Very realistic. Very. I mean, I mean, all of it was realistic in terms of like the way that they made Lola look like her, like the dry skin on her lips. Yeah. Yeah. And Jay uh, constantly using that stick to kind of pat him dry and yeah. That nurse that they had, Susanna, I think her name is, that came in, she was great, wasn't she? Like she was, yeah, she was she really, was. really good with it all. Um, but we'll sort of talk about the different elements of it. Like Billy mm-hmm. obviously had a bit of a rough week on top of everything else because Billy managed to get himself arrested. Um, yeah. All because of Nish, who is just becoming so well, putrid now. I it's... thought Billy had been doing remarkably well up until this point. Yeah. Like, he'd been supporting Honey a lot. And yeah. I thought, surely, Billy, aren't you going to start cracking? He was very much. Are you all right, honey? Until this week, when yeah, obviously Susanna went in and told him, "Now, now it's your final few days." After that, yeah. um, these are she had at start of week. That's when we saw Billy not curb. Yeah, him. it it hit him this week, I think, mm. and uh, just the way that um, because Nish came into the pub like clutching a teddy bear, like making out that he was all sort of like trying to be supportive and everything. Like he wasn't. Yeah. That was all about rep- that was all about reputation. That was all about yeah. him trying to make himself mm-hmm. look good. So the fact that he basically had it thrown in his face, fair play to Billy. But obviously, because Nish is Nish. But why was he trying to wind Billy up so much? Because it was deliberate as well. Like he was trying yeah. to do it as a show, but he knew that it was going to wind him up, right? And he's kind of got this thing with the Mitchells going on anyway, hasn't he? And it's all about yeah. sort of. And because mm. Billy had thrown that back in his face, Nish then felt humiliated. So he then had to punish mm. Billy so for his humiliation. To, yeah. yeah. Um, I wondered, I don't know if you remember, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but when Billy was in the cafe earlier earlier on mm. um, and he, he went crazy at that massive rant, then yeah. on his way out, he pushed into Nish. Did you notice that? Yeah. But, uh, yeah Before I all meant... of that happened. And I yeah. thought, is that, is that why Nish has done all this then? Yeah, I, I wouldn't put it past Nish for, for a anger. second. Like, it just, mm. it, Nish has to be on top of, the, of of all situations. Yeah. So the fact that he was then, he then had the, the power of whether Billy was going to be there when Lola died in his yeah, hands. Yeah, true. He loved mm-hmm. having that. That's what he wanted out yeah. of the situation. Yeah. Um, but... Of course, all of that kind of then boiled down to Honey trying to get Billy out of out of print. And now Honey was amazing this week. Weren't she? Yeah. I mean, this era has been a great era for Honey. Like she has been mm-hmm. completely and utterly revitalized. And yeah. we, had, we had some more great scenes between her and Phil, who are Phil and Honey are becoming a great pairing on screen. Aren't and they? Not, not romantic, nothing like that, but just no. the fact that they have like Well, Honey... they're not gonna go down that route though, are they? No, I, I don't did think wonder so. that. No, I'm because Honey doesn't like him. Really Honey doesn't like him. Don't. Honey does not like yeah. him as a person. Good. Let's That's hope the, they don't do that, though. You know, which is what I really like. And I think that Phil kind of respects the fact that Honey has no qualms about just about standing yeah, up to yeah. him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she, and she, he got even more respect from for Honey this week, the way that she dealt with it. Like, first of all, just mm-hmm. the fact that she just threw coffee at Nish and was just like, didn't care about yeah, that, didn't she care did. about the consequences. And then the way that she went and dealt with Suki as well. Because that whole thing with Suki fancying honey, you kind of got the impression that, that they were just going to be like, let's not let's not talk about that again. All right, yeah, let's happened. not talk. Yeah, yeah. But they did talk about it this week. And they, honey basically said to her, right, look, you're going to sort this out. Otherwise, I'm going to tell Nish that, about, about what happened between me and mm-hmm. you. And Suki, I think respected that i because suki yeah, totally. is that's you know yeah. you can you can you, all the all the vulnerabilities that we've been given with suki recently at the same time she is still this sort of kind of ice queen that does quite like you when mm-hmm. people stand up to her um yeah. 
and she understands the whole family thing, obviously, having lost Jag. So I liked all that. Um, honey, well, I wondered, is that why, amazing. was was that why Nish did it as well, though? Because when Suki spoke to him, he said, I never had the chance to say bye to Jag. Yeah, so that possibly, is why yeah. he's saying, well, I don't want Billy to have his chance to say bye to yeah. Lil, because I never got that chance. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. Oh, what a petty, horrible man. He's a nasty per. I mean, this is I mean, this is why I'm liking Nish as a character so much, because oh, yeah, he's, he's, a, brilliant. He, he's a great villain, because you hate him. Yeah. He's an awful yeah. human being. And he's making yeah. it, and he's making that believable. Like he's vile. Definitely. Um, so yeah, Honey and Phil, fantastic. Phil uh, on on his own actually had a great week because so often, mm-hmm. you know, ninety percent of the time, Phil is Phil. You know, like oh, yeah. hey, 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 like strolling Ooh. around, like hitting people <laughs> with bats and all of that kind of thing. Yeah. But then now and again, they give Phil scenes like this where he's actually allowed to act, and he. Well, I like. Liked- I liked when him and Honey were going around, how he just yeah. let Honey take the lead as yeah. well. And he was just like, I'm here if you need it, but you've yeah. got this. I can see that you've got yeah. this. That were a nice side to see, weren't it? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah, the Phil and Honey stuff, I I hope they continue building on that in terms of yeah. their relationship and their respect for one another because they are completely different people. So yeah. it's, 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 I like that interplay between them. Mm. Um, and then obviously Jay has just had the roughest week of his life, the most difficult moments of his life, sort of mm-hmm. basically just caring for Lola until the moment that she died, like dab- like you say, dabbing her lips. Um, and what a it, rock. I mean, he. this is the thing. Jay has really dealt with all this quite well. And now I think that now yeah, Lola's now died, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's now going to allow himself to collapse. Um, yeah. Or, will he in, or is he going to keep being strong for Lexi? Well, again, Lexi's not done too badly with the whole thing, really. No, has she? Like, she, I think she's. I don't know. I don't know whether it's the fact that Lexi hasn't really computed everything that's actually gone on, or whether mm. she's just accepted it. Well, grief hits people in well. different ways as well, yeah, it? and at different stages. So, because at the and end I of the day, Lexi's eleven. It's a bit, mm, and it's a bit different though, as well, because they've had a bit of time to come to terms with what's happening. It's not like it's completely yeah. out of the blue and they're in shock. It's that whole it's that whole question that that you have in this kind of scenario, isn't it? Like, is it better to lose somebody suddenly, or is it better to know that mm. it's coming? Like, which is the mm. easiest to deal with? I don't know. Like, it's 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 tricky. Um, something else, obviously, that happened this week was the fact that the community spirit got shown in the square. Yes. Um, kind of people do, and, and stuff that happens in this situation, like them being inundated with lasagna and pasta and oh, food. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That always happens. Yeah, yeah, that always happens this in this sort of situation. And then people coming to say their final goodbyes. There was a really gorgeous scene with Kim, Denise, and Lola. Yeah. Um, you know, Denise kind of giving like applying hand cream to her. Kim and Denise sort of doing their sisterly interplay almost. Because yeah. it was like they were aware of the relationship they have and they were sort of entertaining Lola in that respect. Yeah, it's like they were performing exactly. their relationship yeah. to Lola, which was lovely. Yeah. Um, and then Kim obviously sorted out uh, some members of the square holding a sign. That's a very up good way of putting it, by the way. Sorry, Rob, I'm still Thanks. thinking about that comment. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, um, the signage, the sign were a good touch as well from Kim, weren't it? It was yeah. nice. I'm not entirely sure it was that wise to pull Lola out of bed in order to witness it, but it was a nice thought, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, didn't know I think it were all right. We're only into living room for five yeah, minutes. That's true. Right. And then just put put her straight back into bed yeah. again. I suppose it was all right. Yeah. But it was a night. It was a nice moment. Um, and then obviously we. So you have you have all that. They man, they managed to get Billy out of jail, prison, or like out of custody. Cell, yeah. Uh, Jack sorted all out, which is kind of Jack's role within this because you kind of felt mm-hmm. that because I I had a horrible feeling that when Billy was smashing up the shop window, I thought, oh, Jack's going to arrest him. Don't do that, Jack. Come yeah, on, come on. I was wondering. But he didn't, uh, and he was mm. kind of like, "Look, just get me Nish refute like withdrawing his statement, and I'll sort the rest of it. Just mm-hmm. like sort that out." Yeah. So that was nice. And just what I mean, I don't think the community feel has been this strong on the show for so long. It's no, kind of like and seeing how much death like yeah. that has affected the entire square. Yeah. I mean, dare I bring this up? Go on. But like, well, we didn't have it with Chantel, did we? No, that we didn't have it with Chantel. And... No. No, we didn't and I actually Chantel. felt a bit sad when we were watching them all in Vic, and I thought, well, Karen and Mitch didn't have any of this, and we, you know... well, exactly. You know, we barely saw half of the Taylors react to Chantel's death. All right, I know was, that's what I mean. Happen. Um, Bernie so had nice more performance. See... It is Bernie had more this, had more yeah. to do in this in this death aftermath and this kind of death storyline than she did in her own sisters. So yeah, yeah. it's totally a sign so it's of good. The the, yeah. And then, obviously, we came to Wednesday's episode, which was beautiful, Mm. I thought. I thought just the way that it was... I mean, the atmosphere and the setting of it, 
beautiful direction throughout the whole thing. Like there were some gorgeous shots with like the, the intro lighting. that I watched, Rob. By yes, me. the intro. Yes, so they pulled out I the actually... nighttime titles for it. Come on, you know... did anyone else check the brightness on the screen a few times? Because <laughs> I you? did. Did you? Did you? Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's... Oh yeah, it's the night. Oh, it's, it's the nighttime titles. They pulled them out. Yeah, <laughs> you you know when they pull the nighttime titles out that you're you're about to get hit with something. Don't yeah, you? definitely. Um, they, they pulled them out for loot. The they normally pull it out for anniversaries. So mm. the fact that they pulled it out for this episode was nice. And obviously she got a Julius theme, which was really nice as well. Um, but just the build up to her death, and it just felt so real. Like you're sort of, I, I could, I completely got that whole thing with Jay and the clock. Like you can just imagine, like everything, oh, yeah. through, everything is so tense, and like every, with all your senses must be such overload because you're just waiting for something to change in front of you while you're basically mm-hmm. just waiting for her to die. With like a you know tick tock timing down yeah. to a death win, yeah, in background all that constantly. sort of thing. Yeah, I mean it, it. It was. It must have been such a rough period for him. Um, and then come the ending with that fox, I was fine until that fox appeared. I was absolutely fine. I pulled it together. Nothing was going on with me crying or anything. I was like, I've got this. I know where this is going. It's all absolutely fine. And then that bloody fox sauntered onto screen, and it got me. It got me. That fox. I bet that fox is a right dick in real life. Because he was all over the tw- he was all over Twitter he was all over Twitter everybody nah, was obsessed with the fox we had a good and I bet fox. he's I bet he's now sort of strolling around London like going oh, I'm in the VIP section now mate VIP mm-hmm. bins only for me thank you very much see me everywhere <laughs> I mean that was that uh, was good though wasn't I'll, it I, loved I that was bit. I was crying before that anyway to be honest yeah. with, you, with Lexi and Jay and oh just uh, yeah I horrible. mean it was such a nice touch as well like mm. I thought everything about it was just so realistic like. Lexi going in and saying her nails are the wrong colour and Jay getting yeah. so annoyed by it and snapping yeah. a bit because he's thinking, end it, Jay, that don't matter. But to Lexi, it was a huge deal. So you see in both of the perspectives and you can go, well, it doesn't really matter what colour her nails are, does it, Lexi? Like, yeah, really? it does matter, to Lexi, actually. it does, It yeah, does matter yeah. because clearly that was going to be a big thing between Lexi and Lola. Like, they would have... Yeah. Le- Lola would have taught Lexi how to do her nails... Mm-hmm. Um, you know exactly. the, the importance of like the right type of thing that would have been their thing. You know yeah. when she was trying to play the music, that would have been their mm-hmm. thing as well. Yeah. So I think Jay sort of forgot himself then, and then mm-hmm. had to sort of reboot himself. Like, no, hang on, she needs to do this. All right, so she does. Yeah. Which again is a great thing that Jay would do. Like you totally buy that with Jay that he would kind yeah. of break for a second and then sort of just re- reset himself and think, no, mm-hmm. Lexi needs this time. Um, yeah. which was really really nice. It's just how it moves on from here with how they're all going to cope obviously well lex has well. been sorry lex has been right. ridiculously mature aren't you like this is what i mean touched on before yeah this is what i mean and i feel like now it's going to hit her um mm. obviously she they also now have to deal with ben now ben i want to applaud them for because i thought i was convinced that what was going to happen the way it was going to play out was that they were going to have this really really moving episode and really sort of soft and gentle thing and then lola was going to pass away and everyone was going to be kind of gathered around the bed like and then like 30 seconds after she died ben was going to burst into the bedroom i was convinced that was where it was going and i should know yeah. better because it didn't play out like that and i think the way it played Good. out was a lot yeah. better yeah, like, I, definitely. I got more I realistic. It, if I, and I think they got more emotion out of it that way. Like I got mm-hmm. Ben sort of stepping outside the car, instantly working out what had happened, and just yeah. sort of collapsing and dissolving, and then everyone being mad knees, at him for yeah. missing it. Yeah, I got that. That was that that mm-hmm. worked. Um, and I think already, actually, with Ben, he is already regretting that. He's already, and he's not. Yeah, I actually felt sorry out. for him when he was like, yeah. "I thought we had more time." Like it's like yeah. he was in denial though. To be yeah, fair, like... denial. Yeah. He wasn't absolute doing that for dick move. Else, I've but he was now absolute dick move last week in yeah, yeah, how yeah. he was, but he, yeah. he was genuinely in denial. So you know he was. Yeah, that is how um, some people react, isn't it? I mean, it's sort of. I mean, it's, it's gonna. I think it's gonna be a problem for him and Callum because Callum had that moment to say goodbye and Ben didn't. I feel like that's, that's something true. that Ben will that is a true. stick that Ben will beat him with at some point. Well, I get that it is feeling. your own fault. It is your own kind fault. Kind of is his own ben. fault. Um, so I don't know how don't know quite how Ben will react mm. to that or whether that'll be something that they address or not, because Callum had a perfect opportunity to say goodbye to Lola, which is something that Ben is now never gonna have. So yeah. it's it's interesting to sort of see whether that will play on. Um 
obviously ben has got everything going on in the background with his eating disorder so i don't know how the two oh, yeah, story, yeah i don't know how the two stories are gonna are gonna kind of gel together because ben's gonna have to deal with the guilt of losing lola the devastation of losing lola whilst at the same time also dealing with his eating disorder so i mm. I, I don't i don't know i don't know we'll have to wait and see i'll have to wait and see how that all plays out for ben um but and then obviously at the end of Wednesday's episode, we got Julia's theme, which we haven't, we haven't had for Julia's theme for a while, actually. I can't remember the last time yeah. we had one. Um, but just, I, I just, just stunned by how beautiful that episode looked. Like obviously mm-hmm. anything, any episode of EastEnders that's set at night, they always manage to grab that atmosphere because no other soap, yeah, definitely. Has a, no other soap has a better looking set at night than EastEnders does. And nobody, yeah. no other soap manages to do these sorts of hardcore emotional, mm-hmm. grab you by your throat, scenes like EastEnders does um, and just the way that the sort of sunrise came in we, because remember Lola was just said thinking something about that, yeah. sunrise you yeah. know it's just yeah it was just all really and it was really all really nice windy stuff. weren't it before as yeah. well and then when she passed the wind had stopped the sun had come up yeah, yeah it was really nice and then they talked about Jaylee about how where she'd come back as a fox and then we had that gorgeous fox and then we see the, the fox square. yeah yeah oh, didn't see a rat though fox. did we didn't see a rat. Didn't see a rat. If Jay ever dies, <laughs> they'll uh, they'll probably have a Jay, have a fox and yeah, a rat a fox and square a rat. together. Yes, I mean you could argue, you know, the fox and hare. You know, there was all sorts of kind of know, links yeah, to Lola yeah. being a fox. It yeah. worked. It really did work. Um, but absolute applause all around. I thought it was really, really nicely handled, and all the way through this story, actually, it's been really bang on. Really, all the way through, because you know what, I, I've not, fa- I didn't find the. I didn't find Wednesday's episode as upsetting as some of the other other episodes yeah. that we had along the way. Yeah, and I think yeah, it's I because they, pre- they they've prepared as well. They had prepared us. They had prepared yeah. us. They prepared me for the fox, but they prepared us for everything else. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would argue the only foot wrong that they've set with this story in the entire story was mm. the way that was. Um, I can't even remember her name now. The mum, Emma. Um, Emma, thank you. Um, I knew what that you were was. The, say. That was yeah. the only misstep for me throughout the entire story. There were no need, were there? Really, to bring her and back. And ultimately, yeah, and ultimately, she was kind of pointless in the whole story, really, wasn't she? Now, yeah. I don't know whether we're going to see Emma again come the funeral. Yeah, she's going to come back. Yeah, and also, Lexi's still got a number, so is she going to get involved with her in that way or something? I don't know. I got the impression. Mm. Just from because uh, um, Patsy online was saying like things that she'd been on well, so I don't know whether they had to rewrite stuff and she had to leave early. Okay, possibly, but, yeah. I, I mean, I'm kind of putting two and two together and possibly making five mm. here. I don't know. I don't know what obviously how it all played out. Yeah, because otherwise there weren't really much point in her coming back. There Unless wasn't... it was for us, well, for us to see Lola get some closure, but she didn't yeah. really get a great amount of closure really from it. It were oh, I can't handle this, so I'm going to America. Yeah, essentially. Essentially, it was. Mm. So, I mean, Ben could have got in touch with her while she were there, really, and yeah. tried to sort all this a bit sooner, couldn't he? I, I get honestly get the impression that we're not going to see her again. I think it might have just mm. been we tried something, and for various reasons, it we didn't got, work. We got so a bit we'll giddy that on. we had Patsy Kenzie on board, and I mean, then wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? I, well, uh, yeah, I was, yeah. I was quite giddy quite at first. For whatever didn't quite reason. work for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a shame. But if that was the only misfire throughout the entire story, and it probably wasn't even how, an intentional misfire, it was just the how way did you feel about? Um, more specifically, the scene in the pub um, when Lola died, you know, with the darts and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 mm, uh, mm. I liked the community feel of it. This is the thing. It was yes. all about community. What that scene was about yes. was about community. All right. Ne- mm-hmm. Never mind. Ignoring the fact that they possibly played darts for about six hours, if you took yeah. it at face value. Yeah. You know, what I did like was the fact that they were all sort of, because actually that what that darts match was supposed to be was a distraction because most of them were on the group chat. So they were all sort yeah. of just waiting for that moment. That, yeah. You know, it was sort of in the air that Lola was going to die mm. tonight. So it was a case of they were all just sort of trying to distract themselves whilst waiting for that that yeah. message to arrive on their phone, I think. Um, yeah. Perhaps didn't hit the mark completely, but at the same time, I appreciated it enough for what it was trying to do. Yeah, the gesture was nice, yeah. but some of it to me just felt a bit staged, like every time yeah. someone went up and had the darts in their hands and it were... Now I'm going to say what I thought, and I was my just turn like, to talk. Oh, I my turn like... to talk. Yeah, it was. It was as though yeah, the dark was a talking like that. stick, sort of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Unless yeah. that's what they were intending, of course. But Maybe. yeah, it felt a little bit forced. Okay, some of that parts for me. But yeah, just thought I'd mention that it were a little bit. Um. But yeah, I mean, I'm, and then Lola as a character as a whole, I am going to miss her. I, we've said it before, but I think it's a shame that this was Lola's biggest ever story because Danielle Harold was incredible throughout this story. Yeah, all the awards. Uh, can we still vote? Please. 
Yes, I think, it's, I think it's. I think it. I think it closes tomorrow. Uh, so, oh, is it tonight? I think it closes Friday. Friday. So, oh, so it'll be too, it'll be too late. By the time, it'll be too late by the time this goes out. But you make sure you vote. Yeah, yeah, you can still vote. But I think by the time this yeah. goes out, it'll be too late. Um, but let's hope East Enders wins it because it really, really, really deserves it. If they don't, there's something mad going on. I'm kicking on. off. I'm kicking. Because I can tell you. I used to watch another soap and I've stopped watching it because I can't be bothered with it because it's that rubbish. So there you go. There you go. Um, so, yeah, what a week. What a week it's been. And we have got uh, so much more to come next week with the arrival of the Knights. I think we'll be t- we'll be talking much more about the Knights next week. Yeah, definitely. Probably talking much more about Ben and the aftermath for next week as well and how all the characters are sort of dealing yeah, with Yeah, it's going to be a big Ben heavy week, I feel. Ben and Jay heavy week, baby. Ben and Jay heavy, I've got no issues with because I love Ben and yeah, Jay. Yeah. I love their partnership. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But yeah, really mm-hmm. good stuff this week. Who's your gold star going to, Ray? It's got to be Lola for one last time. That's fine. Just because yeah. it's one last time. Yeah. But I think, I, I know you're going to give it to. That is who my... I would have liked to. No, yeah. Yeah. I, I understand. Well. Yeah. I, I mean, if I can give like a spirit star to someone, it would be Lola because obviously Daniel okay. Howard's yeah. been amazing for all of We can do this, that, but... Rob. We make it's it up. It's our podcast. We do what we exactly. like. Exactly. Give a her a spirit star, star. Like, a, a spirit star, like the gold blue Peter badge, you know, <laughs> just sort of this mythical thing that only occasionally Ooh. gets handed out. A bonus yeah. star. Uh, yeah. But I think, like, official gold star, I've got to hand it to Honey. I really have. Because yeah. I think Honey has just been incredible this week. And she continues. She's had a... She's, and what I loved as well was the fact that they they addressed the Jay and Honey relationship and basically said, yeah, that was a mistake. That should never have happened. I loved that as well because that... Oh, God, that never sat right with me. So I'm glad that they brought no, it it was up weird. And, Hopefully it, it won't was... ever get mentioned again now because she's gone, yeah, well, that was wrong, weren't it? I appreciate the way that they've dealt with that afterwards because eventually it would be weird in that household. Like, you mm. two used to sleep together and now we're living together and now it's all weird. But actually the way that they've done it is that everybody involved has sort of said that was a weird time. Let's not talk about that again. But yet they have appreciated yeah. the respect that they've got from it. Yeah. It's been really yeah. nicely handled the aftermath of yeah. that. Considering that it did feel a bit like Cat and Phil, like two names were just pulled out of a hat and they're now going mm-hmm. together without much thought as to reasoning yeah. or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, one th- last thing I do want to ask you, um, Cat and Phil, I felt for the f- may not the first time because I've sort of I've sort of grown on Cat and Phil a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Did you get a bit more sort of like acceptance of Cat and Phil this week? What do you think? I I like Cat and Phil surprisingly. I was the same as you at first when they said they were getting together. I was like, oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Let's pull two random names. Who's single on square? Let's yeah. put them together. Bish bash. No, I think they're really good. I actually think Cat's a bit motherly towards yeah. Phil. Weird, which isn't it? It's quite an interesting dynamic. Yeah, yeah. But like how she. She's telling him, no, and I'll be here waiting for you. And yeah, I, I'm pro Cat I think they work, actually. But he also we did end up, he ended up with Sharon's again this week when the tough, when yeah, the girl got tougher for me. Yeah, he's yeah. always going to go back to Sharon in moments like this. Mm. I don't think he's going to fall into Cat. And in also, I thought moment. when he were at Sharon's, where's Keanu? <laughs> Around. Were you asleep? Around, probably. Probably. But he's he, just but... asleep while Phil's downstairs. I mean, you understood Weird. it though, because you understood it though, because he went there to look at pictures of Denny. Look as well. at Denny. So they've yeah, got yeah. that connection. But because they were young the thing. people, yeah. Yeah, but that's the thing though. That Denny thing, and that's never gonna. Yeah, like, they've got that bond. She, yeah, it's never. She's never gonna be broken, which is why I mm. think that the Cat and Sharon dynamic is gonna is got a long way to go yet, because mm. yeah, Phil's definitely not over Sharon. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But there we are then. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was this week. We now have quite a lot of news to discuss in the week that we had off. So let's get on with it. So when we had a week off, as so often happens in these kind of mm-hmm. scenarios, the world went insane. And we all mm-hmm. of a sudden were inundated with mad rumours, mad apparent leaks and mad story details that are apparently coming up very, very soon. Um, Now, number one is the fact that, and obviously, if you have somehow managed to avoid all of these spoilers, then please keep going because this will be a great surprise to you when it happens on screen if if this all comes to pass, all right? So if you have... Which would have been nice for us to have seen on screen as well and not have had it spoiled, yeah. Would have been nice. So if if you have avoided this, then see you next week. Bye. See ya. Bye. For the rest of you, you will be well aware that the story is Ian Beale, for a start, is coming back. At last, actually. I've missed Ian. It would be nice to have Ian back. Um, Yeah, definitely. About time. 
which in itself is great. You know, it'd be interesting to sort of see him come back and like face up to Sharon again, and they can kind of put all that madness to bed and never, hopefully, never speak gotcha. of that again. Um, however, it would appear that he's not returning alone. Um, now, this story was apparently supposed to be a massive surprise, like aired on screen with no pre like spoilers whatsoever, and we, and the world, mm-hmm. would have, uh, you know, in, the internet would have broken. And everything would have been absolutely marvellous and Twitter would have gone insane. However, apparently someone at the Sun leaked it. So now everybody knows. Um, can, you bleep that, can you bleep that name out, by the way? Because that's a curse word to me. Oh, well, the Sun. Yeah, sorry. But the, sorry, the moon the moon. Bleep paper. it out again. <laughs> it's an absolute disgusting word, isn't it? Um, apparently, ladies and gentlemen, Cindy's back. Yes, Cindy. Not Cindy Jr., Cindy, who apparently was killed off 25 years ago. The Cindy, who was apparently killed off 25 years ago in prison in childbirth. She is apparently set to return from the dead in EastEnders in a massive twist. This is according to the Metro. That will rock Walford. Ian will return to the show with his former wife alive. With show bosses hopeful that it will be the blockbuster story of the year. Cindy was killed off from the show 25 years ago. And Adam Woodyatt left two years ago. Now, obviously, the last time that we saw Ian was at Dot's funeral when he was on the yes. phone to somebody i think we kind of all assumed it was jane and we I said did. yeah and there was a feeling during that that mm. it was the show saying right we've got a story ready to go for you it yeah. falls now in your court when you want to come back we're yeah. ready for you yeah um he's ready for it for the show now um but it seems that the person he was on the phone to wasn't jane it was cindy cindy now, how this is all going to play out, God only knows. <sighs> wow. What do you think? The return of Cindy, what's your feeling? Well, if I'm honest, I'd have preferred another character to have Probably come back Roxy. from the dead. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> the problem, I mean, the problem is, with this returning from the dead thing, it's something yeah. you can only do, like, Yeah, every you can't cell. keep you doing can't it. You can't keep, keep milking it. it. Nah. No. So I feel like this is a bit of... I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't say wasted opportunity, because actually... The kind of character Cindy was, it's something that she would totally do. But the question yeah, yeah, is, yeah. the question is, A, why would why would Ian go back there? I mean, you could argue yeah. that when he left Albert Square, you know, having like he was a shell when he left, if you remember. Like it, yeah. Sharon had tried to kill him. As far as someone else on the square had tried to kill him. So as far mm-hmm. as he was concerned, there was nothing left for him in Walford whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And he left the yep. shadow of his former self. So Presumably, I mean, just half like, his family there, Rob. But yeah, yeah, go on. All his family hate, yeah, and all his family hated him, and two of his kids were yeah. dead. So he he had nothing to return for. Um, and arguably, you could say that someone like Cindy, evil manipulator, could work that to her advantage and yeah. have him back in her bed in a heartbeat. You would think. Yeah. Once he'd got over the fact that not only has his mum yeah. come back from the dead, his now ex wife has come back from the dead as well. <laughs> quite a lively Ian's had, isn't I it? I think he might need some counselling, to be fair. Oh, Ian would be in counselling for years through this. I mean, that might be interesting yeah. to explore. Um, but this is mad. So, I mean, now, of course, there is also now all sorts of story details flying about, some of which you feel like aren't even worth up to discussion Well, this, this is it, because I don't know how I feel about it until we see how until it, we see how it plays really. out. Yeah, yeah because, exactly. Like, I've I, obviously, I remember Cindy. I was quite young, though. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. When she were last in it, right. so yes. I don't, I don't know. You up? All right, yeah, young, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, all right, young. <laughs> I don't um, know. We need to see how they're bringing it back. How is yeah. it going to be that Ian's coming back with a willingly for another mm. one? Why would he come back and not to like? I'm not being funny. If you're going to come back to Square, it, I'd be ringing Kathy up and be like, you'll yes. never guess what, Mum. Yes, yeah, Cindy's yes. not even dead. She's done a you. She's done a Kathy, hasn't Yeah, she? she's done a you. you know yeah, I mean? yeah, you've got much in common with her. Yeah. Um, uh, but then, of course, Cindy will have beef with Bobby if she returns because you Bobby drink. killed one of her children. So there's yes. that to come. So there is plenty for Cindy to be doing while she's there. Yeah. And just the fact that she will go back and be Cindy, you know, because yeah. Cindy was quite the character. Um sure. I just think it's it's and she's got a lot of ties to London Square. You know, she's mm-hmm. got history with Sharon. She obviously her and Kathy have got a lot of history together. The stuff with yeah. Bobby. So there's stuff for her to be doing while she's there. So Definitely. it's an interesting thing. But then there's all sorts of these random details coming through that, like she is like her and Ian are selling baguettes or something in France, and they're uh, all sorts of mad little theories going around that I don't feel mm-hmm. are even worth discussing until we start seeing it right. on screen to see how it all even plays yeah. out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. So I don't know. We'll wait and see. I would take it all with 
a pinch of salt at the moment because obviously nothing has been confirmed. I mean, obviously, I think yeah. Cindy has basically been confirmed as returning because yeah. apparently, I mean, a lot of the papers were saying that, like, well, this was a secret and we weren't supposed to say anything, but if it's out, then it's out. Yeah, we'll report mm. it now. So I think it's pretty much confirmed that Cindy is returning. Uh, someone else who is returning as well. That's not all for the returnees. We've also got Lisa coming back soon, which is exciting. Lisa Fowler. Um, she was last seen in 2020 um, yeah. when I think just after uh, Peggy had been born, birth. Yeah, yeah, went off, went Peggy, off to, yeah. with Peggy and she will be back to apparently deliver some sort of news to Keanu. She'll be coming back with Peggy, uh, mm. the child, not the, not the not the woman, obviously. Yes. Uh, so that'll be interesting to sort of see how that... Well, I mean, not I like Louise. Lisa. No, not Louise. Yeah, so what's going on with Louise? Mm. Where is Louise? Mm. What is, why is she not returning? She's been filming her? a TV show called You, but anyway... Louise, yes, oh, has she? Louise, Louise has come on much more, <laughs> has come on far. Oh, yeah, She's yeah. now a TV actress. <laughs> Um, yes. <laughs> so that's interesting. I like Lisa. I'm really excited to see Lisa because that oh, yeah, she's like always Lisa. good for some. She, she's quite yeah. a versatile character as well. Like she mm-hmm. she can have sort of like a villain role and she can have like earthy yeah. mother role. So she's quite mm-hmm. she's quite malleable. I quite like that. So uh, and something for Phil to do as well because Phil loves Lisa and always happy to see Lisa <laughs> as Phil, isn't he? Oh, of course, um, yeah. So yeah, we've got a lot of stuff to come. 2023 is going to be a mental year if this is all true. I tell mm-hmm. you now. Like with obviously everything that's going on with the flash forward, the big mystery leading up to Christmas, Cindy apparently returning, Ian apparently. Well, is Lisa returning. is Lisa gonna be involved in another who done it, eh? I mean, who knows? Is that why they brought her back? Is it Phil on the floor and Lisa's actually done what she tried to do in <laughs> all those years ago and actually managed yeah. to shoot him? Who knows? Very, very exciting. I can't wait. I mean, throw all your theories in the boxes below, ladies and gentlemen. Let us know what the hell you think is going on. Um, how is Cindy going to be back? What do you think? Do you want to see Cindy back? Would you rather have someone else come back from the dead, Ronnie and Roxy? Uh, or would you? <laughs> and what about? And what about Lisa? Are you pleased to see Ian again? Join in the discussion in the comments section below or by doing any of the following over to you, Ree. You can find us on Facebook on Albert Square After Dark, on Twitter and Instagram at E20 After Dark. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can listen to us on Apple and all your favourite podcast sites. Lastly, email us at e20afterdarkpodcast at gmail.com. Boom. And please, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe and fiddle in all your little discussion points below. And follow us if you're only listening on uh, Audible or Spotify or any of the things. You know, the, click your well, button, do like, Do like and subscribe yeah. on YouTube. Click us. It the bigger we, bigger we get, the better we get. So go on, do your yes. thing, ladies and gentlemen. Um, right, so that's it for this week. Quite a week we've had, and I am very much looking Ooh. forward to discussing next week with you, Ray. You can go to bed now. So it's Ooh. quite. it's gotten quite late now. Um, and it's been an emotional week. Hasn't it just? I'm emotionally knackered after this week. And if I ever see yeah. a fox again, I'm just going to cry every time oh. I see a fox from here on in. Too much, too much, too much. Right, ladies and gentlemen, until next week, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening. Until then, it's goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Bye. Yeah, bye.